Right, the Wexford against Limerick rivalry. Um, these are two counties that, I think in modern times, Michael, you could say that they basically ended famines, both in pretty spectacular style. Wexford in 1996 against Limerick, and then Limerick in 2018 against Galway, of course. Two great hurling counties, but um, yeah, definitely the lengths of those famines. 45 years, you know, that John Kiley and co ended in 2018, and then you obviously have the 28 years that Liam Griffin and his brigade did in 1996. Yeah, you go through it and like there's so much tradition in the two counties and yet nearly you're kind of thinking Limerick only have eight All-Irelands, Wexford only have six, 14 between them. You kind of think, geez, you think both of them would have more realistically. There's been a fair few kind of near misses and a lot of disappointments for both of them, probably particularly Limerick up until 2018. But it's great to have both of them back. Like Limerick obviously like were at the top of the table two years ago. And Wexford were beating a point in the All Ireland semi final last year by a tip team that went on to win the All Ireland convincingly. So they're both they're both right there and going to be duking it out in in October, November, and December probably this year for the All Ireland. Uh, and it's an exciting prospect because I know you you you'd be happy if Tipperary won the All Ireland every, every year, but it's great to have other it's great to have other counties in the mix as well. Yeah, and if you want to get these jerseys, go to orgaretro.com, put in the promo code. Our game if you want 15% off. But two fairly passionate hurling counties that going through a couple like lean times. I would say there for a long spell, especially after Limerick had that under 21 success, the three in a row at the start of the 2000s, to not you know back that up with an All Ireland win. I'd say they wondered was it ever going to be their turn. And similarly with Wexford too, they had some hard times. Under 21s looked like they were making some ground. Lost an All Ireland Under Twenty One semi final to Antrim, which would have been a huge blow. And you'd wonder if they too could have broken. Uh, well, can they now even kind of break history and get back on top? Yeah, a hundred percent. It's funny, like going back through this. We obviously predominantly talk about senior games when we're talking about these kind of rivalries. But looking back, uh, the, the two thousand fifteen All Ireland Under Twenty One final is a big kind of a reference point to this. Uh, Limerick, Limerick won 26 points to 1-7, a, f- a fair battering. And if you look at that Limerick team uh, uh, and the sub, sub that came on, Peter Casey was one of five subs that came on, 11 of that team went on under John Kiley again, who was under 21 manager in 15, senior manager in 18. 11 of them were playing uh, either come on or started in that Alarna final victory in 2018. And even just funnily enough, I was saying to you off air, Sean Finn was cornerback, Richie English fullback, Mike Casey, number four, and Dara Burns, five. Apart from Richie English and Mike Casey switching, those four basically kept the same positions. Gerard Hegarty was wing back, switch up to wing forward. Dara Donovan was midfield. Pat Ryan was midfield as well, obviously more pronounced as a forward. Uh, Keen Lynch was centre forward, moved to midfield. Tom Morrissey was full forward, moved to the wing. And Barry Nash, who's kind of vying for a spot now at a wing back, scored uh, five points from corner forward. And then yeah, Peter Casey came on. Uh, that day and got three points, much like he uh, has come on in a load of senior games recently. And then on the Wexford side of things, even though they took a fair pace in that night, six of that team that start, started last year's Leinster final triumph. So Simon Dunahoo, Liam Ryan, uh, Paddy Foley, Jack O'Connor, Kevin Foley and Conor McDonnell and Cottle Dunbar came on as well. So there's a fair kind of reference point and it looks like it looks like the two of them are going to be really knocking around the latter stages of the championships for the, for the next couple of years. And the prospect of Davy Davy Fitzgerald coming in, in contact with with John Kiley and even John Kiley's coach, Paul Canark, who was coach with Wexford when they won the All-Ireland in 13 and coach when they won the league in 16, is uh, it's a fairly tantalising prospect. And, you know, like... That Limerick team that lost the, the All-Ireland final to Wexford in 1996, and that's probably the, the high point of the fixtures we'll talk about between these two counties, they had also lost two years beforehand. And I interviewed Tom Dempsey, who everyone would know from both being a pundit for years and being on that team in 1996. Um, I spoke to him a while ago in our game that I, and here's a little clip of, uh, of his memories. I suppose Limerick in the final, I think if Limerick had beaten Offaly in '94. I think it would have been much harder to beat Limerick in 96. And I think that a lot of the ghosts probably lay with Limerick in, like, bear in mind, every advantage was with Limerick in 96. I mean, we had 14 men from the 20th minute onwards. And, you know, if they'd hurled, they didn't hurl well, Limerick. If they'd hurled away, now I have to say our backs were absolutely outstanding that day, cutting down, freezing that. But I remember going into the dressing room at half time. We were a point up. 
And I, I was delighted. I, I got a point just before half time, and I said, this is important just to stay that bit ahead of them, even if it's only a point. But there was two things about it. John O'Connor kept saying in the dressing room, keep it tight. It's suiting us to keep it tight. And also, um, uh, in the uh, in the final, I, I at halftime, I was talking to Seamus Barron. Seamus was a rat your man, a real... You know, Rat Newer men are the cutest men about hurling, and Seamus is a great man, but they really know the hurling. And Seamus said to me, I sat down in the corner of the dressing room, he said, Do you know something? He said, if, if we can keep it tight, keep her calm, don't be going mad, maybe, maybe, just maybe let them panic, they'll be the ones to beat themselves. And, and the game kind of turned out a little bit like that. Like Limerick against 14 men, four points in the second half, you know, that wasn't that Limerick team of that era, you know, they were a swashbuckling fabulous team and and I just think that maybe the doubts of 94 did catch up with them and if they'd won in 94 I, I, I think they'd have been a harder at least a harder team to beat if almost unbeatable in 96 you know and, and, and it is a regret that they haven't won in All-Ireland because they contributed so much to that era and I was delighted to see them come back and win it last year you know or two years ago it was it was great to see them but Right, so that was uh, Tom Dempsey, and he kind of get, has some great reflections on 1996. And as I said, you can catch that interview on ourgame.ae. Just search his name, and you'll find it very quickly. Do you know um, John Kiley, who was part of the team, or well, who led the team in, in 2018 that won the All Ireland? He was part of the panel in both 1994, the one that collapsed in the five-minute final against Limerick, and also in 1996 for that game. But he was talking about. Um, you know, just getting over the end line in 2018 when Galway came back from a mile to almost level the game, that late Joe Canning free that kind of dropped short and Tom Condon carried away. But after the games, I was talking to John Kiley and I was asking him, did, did he feel another collapse was coming? And he goes, I don't know, I'll, I'll have to talk to the players to see how they felt themselves really. I know I felt, oh crap, this isn't going to happen, is it? And you're just imploring the players to win those last uh, few vital balls. It's such a difficult thing to do. Like, Can you imagine the pressure they felt under in those last 10 to 15 minutes? Just incredible. And we couldn't make any more substitutions. We had uh, five already made and still had Tom Morrissey going around on a leg and a half. He still had to play out in the wing. He couldn't sit at the edge of the square. So you have all these sort of things going on. And uh, it isn't just one little turning point or one little thing that makes an All-Ireland and an All-Ireland win. I mean, an awful lot has to go your way and even having the right man leading you to get across the line. Yeah, it's funny there. Like, John Kiley was obviously helpless in that scenario. And it's a funny parallel, actually, between, between John Kiley and Liam Griffin in 1996. Liam Griffin was nearly shown the door. Like, there was, there was nearly, the clubs were, nearly some clubs in Wexford were nearly adamant to get rid of him after a bit of a disastrous 1995. And Limerick people, similarly, were not particularly happy with Kiley in 2017 and how they got on, kind of limped out of the championship, a, a very, very poor performance against a, a, a poor enough Kilkenny team at the time in, in Nolan Park. And then yet a year later, they're both messiahs uh, leading their counties, their native counties to the promised land. But Liam Griffin is, Liam Griffin in 96, just to talk about 1996, uh, Wexford obviously, it was a 28 year famine going back to 1968. There were so many things though that he did and they've gone down in, they've gone down in GA folklore now at this stage. And, and one of them I'd like to kind of touch on was before they played uh, Offaly in the Leinster final in 1996, brilliant, brilliant game. Um, Liam stopped the bus, it was in July 14, he stopped the bus on the Wexford border with Wicklow and got them all to got them all to get out and they stood on the side of the road right in the border and he, he made one of the great GA speeches and I just quote a bit of it because you and me have both talked to Liam Griffin and you know the passion that he exudes and you can just imagine um, the goose pimples were standing up on, on lads here, I'll just go through a bit of it here, so it was something like this, he says, who are you, who are you, I'll tell you who you are. When I'm finished speaking, we are going to walk out of Wexford. Our goal is that the next time we set foot in this, our county, we will be Leinster champions. On Friday night, there was a report on television from Offaly, and in mentioning the word tradition, they sang their anthem. It made me think about tradition and its importance, and about this fantastic county of ours, a county which we should be so proud of. From the beach outside there to Court Town, Gorey, Ardnameen, Blackwater, Curraclough, Wexford, Rosslair, Kilmore, Cullenstown, Feathered and the Hook, and back again to the Ross, Mount Leinster, Ratnor and Enniscorthy, and of course, Bula Vogue. That's who we are, and that's where we come from. And then he finishes it off, and he just says, Today we are playing for a way of life. 
Breathe in now, long and hard, and as you walk, think of yourself since childhood, of all the matches you've played, all of your friends, both alive and gone, and make this promise to yourself. Today is the day that we will be proud again. And remember, we are the boys of Wexford who fought with heart and hand. That's real tradition. And let's go, he says, and they hop back onto the bus. And you'd literally be jumping out of your skin. I'd say they couldn't wait to get to Crow Park. But that was the, the passion and everything that he brought to the table. He changed their mindset totally, completely changed their expert mindset. Is, isn't there a fair balance to be found, though, between pumping your players up and getting them in the right mindset versus winding them up so much that you've the game played long before you even get to the ground and you're mentally spent by then? Totally. It's funny you should say that because sometimes you'd say after if things get real emotional, uh, it, it, was just too, it was just too much. We were totally uh, emotionally drained by the time the match came up. But I, Wexford seemed to be a bit, of a, a bit of an aberration in that way because Sean Flood missed the All-Ireland final. Sean Flood, the, the kind of long-haired, ponytail kind of wing-back, uh, a great musician as well. He missed the final and George O'Connor ended up getting called up as a result. But Sean Flood made a speech before the match and... Um, this is, this is Liam Griffin talking about it after. He made a speech to the players, and to be honest, we were all in bits. He told the lads of his dreams of playing in an All-Ireland final and how much it meant to him. To be quite honest, we were all in bits. It was a very moving speech, and Sean broke down. But it lifted the team spirit onto a new level. And I know that is a very... ...poured his emotions out there for everyone. And uh, some people... If you're not used to that type of thing, it could affect people and, as, as I said, drain them. But maybe it, it was different back then. It was the, it was the kind of the tradition of breaking hurls, making noise, and it was all passion, thunder and guts. And uh, it definitely seemed to work for them anyway. Yeah, without doubt. And do you know in that game, one thirteen to 14 points, Wexford had, you know, and Tom Dempsey explained it very well. Limerick just didn't find a way to make it happen just 14 or 4 points in that second half and then of course it was the Liam Dunn against Gary Kirby thing where Liam Dunn and Kirby were both pulling in the air but Kirby ended up with a broken hand at the back of it and do you know I mean Liam Dunn was talking about it not so long ago and he goes unfortunately from my end of it there there were different things that came along with the game I like to look at it and remember a man of the match trophy and an all-earned medal to show for it Look, what's done is done. I should have, uh, I would have put my life on the line to win that All Ireland final for myself, my family, and for Wexford. To be honest, the ball came down. The two of us pulled. I'd ask anybody to look at that video there and watch the way my opponent was pun pulling on the ball. But 28 years of vengeance went into it. I've an All Ireland medal at the end of the day, and not too many Wexford men have those. And I, I think there is a fair point to it. Like it's a wild pull. But um, like, do you think that? the idea of missing something by that much when you're pulling in the air like that do you think that you like and leave Liam out of it for a second do you think that too often there is badness from lads like it definitely does happen but it's a more often than not these things are accidental again and that's not to 100% say Liam's was or wasn't but a lot of the time it would be yeah overhead pulling is probably the hardest skill in the game to like if you if you threw a ball up in the air and you swung at it, if you threw a, a ball was coming down from a puck out and you were just swinging underneath it, chances are you'd probably get maybe two or three out of ten or make some sort of decent connection with them. So what's happening the other the other six or seven times? You're missing the ball, and if there's somebody there, you're probably clattering into them. That that's the way it was, but it it did, it had massive ramifications because Kirby was their linchpin, and he just wasn't the same. He just didn't have the same influence on the game um, after, after that incident and it was he had to play the whole game basically with, with a broken hand and while Eamon, Scalling, Eamon uh, Scalling got sent off in that game and Wexford played you know more than a half with 14 men uh, I, I still think probably the incident with Gary Kirby probably had more of an effect on the game I would think than the sending off because he was you know, Gary Kirby was probably worth two men. He was the their go to man in the forward line. He was their, you know, reliable attacker that would always stand up for them. And that had to have had a massive effect on his game. Had to have had. He'd scored one thirty three in the championship before that, but I think Wexford were so disciplined they weren't giving away a freeze and Kirby even knocked over two more with the broken hand, which is fair going. But I th I think most lads who've played know there are times when you can play with a broken hand and you're getting away with it. And there are times when you just can't. I don't know if you've felt that. I, I know I certainly have. At getting a bet like that at the start of a game is, is quite difficult as well. It's literally like the, the first ball, the first chance he got. 
and you're carrying it around for the rest of the day, you haven't like scored a couple of points and got in your groove. If you're in your groove and confident at that stage, you'd probably just be able to shake it off. You can shake off most things if the adrenaline is gone, but for it to happen at that stage of a game, and without being smart, me, me and you both know as well, uh, referees and things are like officiated different at the start of a game. Like, look at the Ty Kennelly incident with uh, was it Nicholas Murphy in the 09 All Ireland final? I think it was. That happens 20 minutes into the game. He's probably sent off. It happens at the start. He's not the same. The same with Liam Dunn. Like that wasn't even blown as a free, was it? Play just play just played on. Whereas if that happens later in the game. It's probably a different story altogether. And there's probably a crowd reaction and everything on it. But at the start of the game, things kind of happen. And even before the game started, I thought it was... Well, I suppose it's easy to say it was te- it's telling after. But Limerick kind of broke rank in front of Hill 16, uh, going around for the parade. And they were kind of... Ru- they were just left there, running around for two or three minutes. Basically, like, kind of like Hell's Chicken. And i never forget the like, story with the chest out, walking around like that. And you could see... I remember Liam Griffin, I remember reading Liam Dunn's book, which is actually a brilliant, brilliant book, uh, I Crossed the Line, it's called, and he just says, well, Liam Griffin had it in their heads, he said, you know, a lot of people, the occasion can kind, kind of get to you. He had them prepared to shake hands with the president, he had all that gone through, and he just said, when you're going around, don't look up at the crowd the whole time, but just look up for a couple of seconds, look at the colour, and just realise, that's why you're doing it, that's why you're here today. Who had a better strut? PJ Fingers O'Connell or Martin Story or Conor uh, McGregor? Yeah, I think to be honest with you, P- uh, Fingers O'Connell is in a league of his own when it comes to strong. Now, I remember Story's was particularly impressive and the chest was out, but O'Connell nearly had the Vince McMahon kind of Conor McGregor esque with the hands as well, so I'd have to say Fingers O'Connell. Yeah, they call it the Billy Walk, I think. Um, so, jumping into some other clashes that the teams would have had over the years, there's the. Um, there was a very good qualifier in 2001. I think it was, um, was it a quarter final actually? It was, yeah, Wexford 4-10, Limerick 2-15. Damien Henry scored two, Fitzhenry scored two goals and you can, de- you can definitely find that online. Absolutely smashed the last minute penalty to win it. But he'd actually gone from villain to hero. So he dropped the ball for Barry Foley to knock in for a goal in the first half, smashed a, a penalty two minutes later. 16 wides from Limerick that day. Now, if you jump forward to 2014, this was the first time that Wexford showed at senior level in a number of years that they were ready to kick on again and I think they'd, um, they'd beaten Watford in a qualifier but then they ended up getting spanked. Shane Dowling scored 2-8 and it was 4-26 to 1-11. You've already mentioned that 2015 under 21 game but I want to jump way way back in time. Firstly starting with 1955, uh, All-Ireland semi-final, Wexford 2-12, Limerick 2-3. Mick Mackey's, Mick Mackey's Greyhounds beaten that day. Uh, That's just a quick little uh, stop there before we go back even further again to 1910, right? So this was Wexford 7 goals, Limerick 6-2, back in the day when, you know, you weren't scoring too many points. But um, there was actually a reenactment to this in 2010 when Shelmaliers slash Castlebridge, they um, had beaten a hand Castle Connell and they kind of played in full 1910 playing gear and full 1910 playing rules. So that was pretty cool. But I found um, an extract from the Wexford people talking about that final in 1910. And, he, and I'll just read out a piece of it. Wexford entered the match as underdogs, as Limerick had come through Munster impressively. A special mass was celebrated in Castlebridge for all travelling to the final. Father Pat Kavanagh said, Men of Castlebridge, whatever you do today, go and do it and do it well. The Free Press reported that 10,000 people packed Jones's, par- Jones's Road for the occasion, paying a record gate of £300. Incidentally, 1910 was the first year that goalposts, as we know it, were used. It was also the year that saw the introduction of the square and the parallelogram. A Limerick goal was disallowed in the first half for an infringement of the square, while Wexford had one disallowed in the second. The game was reported to have been exciting from start to finish. Wexford completely dominated the first half with the early goal from Rich Doyle setting them up. Although Limerick levelled, further goals from Doyle and Andy Keogh gave the Castle Bridge men momentum. Wexford conceded a soft goal, but this was followed by a goal from Dave Kavanagh and Doyle's third. Wexford led six goals to 3-1 at half time. They had to endure long periods of Limerick pressure in the second half, but the Wexford defence was heroic as they held out for a remarkable seven goals to 6-2 victory. Like, it does sound like a complete throwback. And the idea that the crossbars just came in, I suppose it's no, it's no, it's no surprise that there was 13 goals, but only two points. 
Yeah, geez, they nearly blew it, didn't they? Six six goals scored at half time and only scoring a, a goal in the second half. I'd say the stats man would have been pulling his hair out if they were watching that. But it's just that it's, it's, it's just a throwback to a completely different time. Like you you look at it now, like Wexford are, Wexford are winning games now a lot of time without scoring goals, and even Limerick would be Limerick would be as well putting up massive totals in the you know in the mid twenties to late twenties as well. It just shows you how uh, how things have changed. But yeah, a great little yarn from the past. Yeah, and I've one other one. Um, I was going digging back in the archives. Also, I'll just bring it up here as well. So this was from the nineteen eighteen All Ireland final. Limerick nine five. Wexford won three, so a bit of a beat down. But just there was an article from Century Island, um, which was on the 27th of January 1919. So not unlike 2020, there's going to be um, an All Ireland at an odd time of the year. But this was actually 1918 All Ireland going into 1919. So the extract goes: their decider again, or Limerick are the All Ireland champions for 1918. Their decider against Wexford, deferred from last year owing to the flu epidemic, was played before an estimated crowd of 10,000 spectators yesterday at Croke Park. For such a large attendance, the quality of the contest was a disappointment. Only the Limerick men really showed up and they trounced the Slaney Siders by a scoreline of 9-5 to 1-3. It is Limerick's first All-Ireland hurling title since 1897 and it was their captain, Willie Hawk from Monaghy, who accepted the trophy presented by the Great Southern and Western Railway from the GA president, Alderman Nolan. The winning Limerick team are scheduled to play a Dublin selection on 9th of February for the final of the National Aid Tournament. And you know what? Those sort of details, it just does sound like a, like it's it's 102 years ago. It just sounds just completely removed from now. Yeah, it's a totally different world in fairness. It's uh, it's far it's far away from 96 or 2018. But just come here, just on that actually, because I'm thinking like what's I think of like what are the, some of the most iconic songs in GA history? And if I wonder now, we're gonna pit one of my best favorite moments in Crow Park was 2018 when the Cranberries Dream came on after Limerick won the All Ireland. And I'm not from Limerick, and I still have goose pimples. It was absolutely unbelievable and an outpouring of emotion. But then you compare that to Dancing at the Crossroads in 96. Which which are you taking? Oh, I think I'm taking Dreams Cranberry from uh, 2018. It was powerful stuff. It was hair standing up on the back of your neck. Yeah, I, th- I think it was under- like Dancing at the Crossroads. It's brilliant. And there's more of a crack to that where there was more of a, I don't know. It just, there's such a power to that to those cranberry songs and matching in with that hugely long famine a way longer famine than Wexford had uh, ended in, in 1996 I'm just about going to go for the Limerick one I go with Dancing at the Crossroads like if you chat to anybody from Wexford it's unbelievable it's like word for word it, it's, it's, it's literally the, the unofficial anthem of Wexford it's a great tune there's a great video of uh, Larry O'Gorman singing it last year uh, down in Wexford as well and just the, the passion in it they're, they're obviously like two obviously unbelievably passionate counties, but Wexford, yeah. There's a great, there's a, there was a great, uh, there's a great video tribute to Tony Dorn a couple of years ago. and went through all his best scores and all that. And there was another great Wexford song came on, completely different than Dancing at the Crossroads. But anyone from Wexford will know it. Uh, the the line just goes something like, you know, I'm grateful for that Wexford heart that beats inside of me, and it's just dynamite like they're real real passionate GA County I have to go for Dance at the Crossroads though the scenes after 96 when that was sang back in Gory and these places absolutely unbelievable yeah and um, we might actually throw that out on Twitter and just see which gains more popularity but another thing we'll do is pit a couple of players as we always do against each other and we kind of settled on Lee Chin versus Gary Kirby a couple of lads that you'd see in around the centre forward position like Gary Kirby People, younger people these days wouldn't, probably wouldn't know too much about him. He probably isn't as celebrated as other guys from back in that era, like maybe Kieran Carey. But he had four All-Stars. He broke tip hearts on a number of occasions. So I remember that well from being a teenager and watching him. But uh, Lee Chin these days, obviously a force of nature at times. Yeah, Gary Kirby's a funny one. And Patrick Swell is a funny one as well, because they've produced some unbelievable talent. Like They've produced, obviously, in the last you know 20 to 25 years, and a bit more, Kieran Carey, Gary Kirby, Aaron Galan, and Keen Lynch, which is, which is fair going. Like K- Carey and Kirby would have been the mainstays of that '90s team, and Lynch and Galan are probably are going to, are two of the mainstays of the '18 team and the team going forward. And they're only in their early twenties as well. Not to mention Dermot Burns in there as well. Like Gary Kirby won ten Limerick titles. He won two Munster titles. He won two Munster titles with Limerick also. 
I mean, he really did rack up the titles, and, and like Lee Chin is probably going to be under pressure to to win a huge amount of county titles with Fate Harriers. Although the the talk is that they've had a lot of underage success, so maybe that will change. Will he get an All Ireland? Is he more likely to get a senior All Ireland with his county than Gary Kirby, who came so close with Limerick? Yeah, like they they missed him. They probably missed the chance last year in a way. It's funny. Like we we're talking about Eamon Scallon getting sent off and Wexford overcoming that. Like uh, Wexford basically were really, really calm. You know, really kind of batting down the hatches, made it a really tight kind of physical game, gave away nothing. Whereas last year the boot was on the other foot. Tipperary had John McGrath sent off, and Wexford probably capitulated maybe with fifteen or twenty minutes to go when an All Ireland final spot was in was in their grasp. That was a great, great chance. That was a brilliant chance to get to an All-Ireland final. Funnily enough, we're talking about Wexford and Limerick. It easily could have been a Wexford-Limerick uh, All-Ireland final last year if Wexford had, or if Limerick had shown up a bit earlier and Wexford had taken their chances. I'd say, like, Davy signed up for another two years. It, it's really hard to know what we're going to get this year, but that team probably has, you know, two to three years to get their All-Ireland. But they haven't, like, went, they've only won one Leinster. Do you know what I mean? And they haven't been to an All Ireland final, so it's almost like stages. Last year was probably a miss, a missed chance. So Lee Chin's probably going to be under pressure to get his All Ireland, but he's they are in with a shout. They're in with a good a good shout. If if things you wouldn't know, you wouldn't know what way this year could work out yet. Yeah, I I don't know. I think Wexford need to win it this year or next year, really. Or I think the time will pass for some of those players, some of those brilliant players, because it took them so long to get up from that base of. Well, basically, they were building it on nothing for a while because the team had been so unsuccessful for so long, had been under the boot of Kilkenny uh, locally. They've finally risen out from under that, got their Leinster title last year, like you said, ahead of Tipperary. They would have then gone into an All-Ireland final against the Kilkenny team that they'd already beaten. And I think the, the sort of taboo of not being able to beat Brian Cody's men, that was sort of gone. I think it was their chance. And oh, I think the yeah, I think that like... I don't think they'll do it, but I would say is that even if they don't do it, that doesn't necessarily mean that they won't have delivered or they won't have a great season in the next year or two. Like we're in an unprecedented era where seven or eight teams could potentially win the All Ireland, and if like if Wexford died with their boots on in an All Ireland semi final or an All Ireland final next year again, I don't think you could say, "Oh, geez, they failed." Well, you're up against unbelievable teams. Like I even said to you briefly beforehand. Galway and Tip in 15, 16, 17, they lost and beat each other by a point. But you couldn't say that Galway in 16, ah, you were useless, no, or Tip in 17. Now, Tip had a, an up and down year at best. But you know, the team died with its boots on, so no one's ever going to have too many complaints with that. Take that beautiful Wexford jersey off your back. The minute you said Wexford, you don't think Wexford will win all Ireland, you might as well forget about it. I hope, I hope people absolutely lynch you. Um, no, but I, I know where you're coming from. It's funny going back to the, the Kirby uh, chin debate. Uh, we we probably we've talked in another video about you know what is a centre forward nowadays. Gary Kirby would have been maybe your old style centre forward sitting in on the centre back, um, going hard under high balls and things like that. Chin would be kind of a different kind. Um, they're both like Chin would be more your mobile centre forward moving out to pitch kind of picking up ball but he's also very good under high ball as well like I remember the, the 2017 Leinster semi-final one of the, probably one of the great performances Wexford performances in recent years was Chin's like heroic performance down in Wexford Park that night when they beat Kilkenny but they are two different type of players um, I would have said Kirby's probably your more natural score getter funnily enough I would I wouldn't have had Chin down as a free taker, but he was brilliant. He was brilliant last year in championship. Hardly hardly missed the free. So you're actually putting centre forward against centre forward, free taker against free taker. I would say nearly kind of spiritual leader of the attack and of the team up against each other here as well. But it would just be be Kirby for me, like four time All Star. Lee Chin won his first All Star last year. Obviously has the scope to win more in time. But um, yeah, two different types of players, but two crucially important players to their team. I think there's a fair chance that if Wexford do get across the line and win that All-Ireland, and they do have the quality to do it, by the way, I think there's a fair chance that Lee Chin will end up as Hurler of the Year, and that might sway this debate for him. But as of now, even the legacy of Gary Kirby breaking my heart as a young fella a couple of times, I'm going to have to just about go with Gary Kirby. 
But uh, what a rivalry. Or sorry, they've had some great moments down through history. We'd, it probably would have been brilliant if they had to meet more often. And even like in recent times, it's funny that Davy Fitz's first competitive game over at Wexford and John Kiley's first match as senior manager, it was a league fixture that when they played each other in 2017. And we could have a couple of shared moments in the next year or two as well, because they are two very much top counties. And uh, if you want to get these jerseys, which are of course a throwback to the, the golden eras, Go to our game, go to sorry, orgaretro.com and put in the promo code our game and you'll get 15% off.